Hey friends, good to see you again. Good to be with you. Good to be here. Um, let's pray. Amazing God, I thank you once again to, to be able to do this in this way, to share your word, to be at a distant yet be together in ways that you've provided throughout the course of time and history. And we just ask that in these moments you edify us, enlighten us, encourage us to be your people, to be your kingdom builders, your kingdom workers, and and just help us to see better what it looks like to bring those pieces of your kingdom here to earth. In the name of Jesus, amen. So friends, let's get into this week's sermon. So I've talked about the power of prayer before when we talked about Aldersgate Day and when I shared with you some pieces of my personal testimony that were really greatly surrounded by prayer. Today we're going to be exploring some answers that God gives us when we pray. Some answers are obvious and very easy to see, very easy to understand and comprehend. But some answers are far beyond our comprehension at times, and some will not make any sense until years later. Now, there's a book that I've read, and I encourage you to read it if you're inspired. It's called The Battle Plan for Prayer. And among many, many things, it really helps to lay out some answers that we will have, that we'll receive in our prayer life. And it bases all of it in scripture, as well as giving some real life examples that people have experienced in their own prayer life. So as we explore some of these answers and reflect on some examples, I really encourage you to think of times when maybe these examples that I give you have happened in your life. Are there times that we're going to talk about where God's maybe answered your prayer that way? Or maybe you can feel encouraged that maybe God's still in the process of answering your prayer. But first, let's dive into some scripture before we go any further. The first scripture reading is going to be Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, or reap, or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows what, that you need them. <clears throat> but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And then just a couple more verses from Matthew 7, 7 through 9, which says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, 
will give him a snake. If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? I'm reading more here. I'm on verse 12 now. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So what are some of the ways that God answers prayer? Well, that book that I mentioned, The Battle Plan for Prayer, puts it this way. One thing they say, and maybe we've experienced this, is yes, immediately. Yes, immediately usually happens when our prayer is exactly in line with God's will and God's timing. So our prayer has already, in a way, been in motion from the beginning of our lives and maybe even the beginning of time. And this is all possible because, well, anything's possible for God. And God's not bound by our timeline, but God can move in and out of it in unfathomable ways to indeed make all things work together for our good. We see an example of this prayer in a few places, really, but one that I'm going to really mention is in Genesis 24. In Genesis 24, Abraham was old, and Isaac did not yet have a wife. Abraham commissions one of his servants to go to their native land to find a wife for Isaac. And verse 12 starts off like this. Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please, let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink, and I'll water your, cam your camels too. Let her be the one that you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, verse 15 says, Before he had finished praying, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. And the story continues, but I think you can gather how it ends if you don't remember it. And that prayer was answered before he had finished praying. But sometimes it's not yes immediately. Sometimes it's a yes in due time. Sometimes we just are not ready for our prayer. Sometimes God has a bigger picture in mind than we're able to see. And there's still some pieces that may need to be set up and worked out for our prayer to be in line fully with God's will, but we need to stay faithful to God in prayer and in service, and God will show up when it's the right time. You know, I think again of the book of Genesis, Joseph was sold. One of my favorite stories in the whole Bible, Joseph was sold, wrongly accused, and put in prison, but eventually he was brought to be second in command of all of Egypt because he stayed focused on God. Um, my mentor, who uh, I consider him my mentor, Neil Whitney, he's a pastor in uh, Lima area. He's told me one of the most marvelous testimonies that I've, that I've had in this kind of prayer, that I've heard of in this kind of prayer. And it was about his wife. His wife prayed for a very long time for her own personal health issue. She had symptoms that were symptoms of lupus. If you know anything about lupus, I don't think that's something anyone would ever wish on anyone. So after a long time of prayer, she received her answer, and she's well. You want to guess how long she prayed? I'll give you a hint before I give you the answer. She prayed longer than I've been alive. She prayed for 34 years, knowing that God would show up in due time. And God did. 
And sometimes God will tell us yes, but it's yes so we'll learn from it. How often do we think that we know best and then nothing goes to plan? I'm reminded of the Israelites. The Israelites once were without a king and they relied only on the prophet Samuel. The Israelites were not happy with this. They felt shamed that other nations had kings to lead them, but they didn't. Samuel warned them in 1 Samuel 8 that God has said that they should not have a king. The king that they're going to choose will ruin them with war, taxes, treat them unfair. He's only going to look out for the king and the king himself. But still, the Israelites demanded a king. And they got Saul. And Saul did all of the things that God warned them of. But their prayer was answered for a new king. And I think they learned from it. They had a quite the history of learning from things. But of course, God doesn't always say yes. Sometimes God says no. But why? God may say no because your heart's not right. James 4, 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. What you may spend, or that you may spend, what you get on your pleasures. And then Proverbs 1, 28 through 31 tells us, They will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Since they would not accept my advice and spend burned my rebuke. They will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. You know, it is, it is very important for our prayers and our pleas to God not to be on our fallen nature, not to be on our sinful desires. Too often, we humans can have the tendency to think that what we are thinking and feeling is right because we pursued those thoughts and those feelings selfishly and without God. Sometimes God might say no because God simply has a better plan than we do. You know, the reality is that God knows so, so much more than we could ever or will ever fathom. So our prayers, our deepest desires, and our most desperate pursuits are no weight at all to God if we just have faith in that. You know, a few weeks ago I spoke about Lazarus. Lazarus died, was buried, and then resurrected by Jesus. I'm pretty certain that the family of Lazarus and maybe even some other people were praying for him relentlessly to be healed and delivered whatever he had but God still allowed for Lazarus to die but as we remember God and Christ had much greater plans than to just prevent the death of Lazarus they planned to raise Lazarus from the dead to further demonstrate the power of God and the authority of Jesus Christ so maybe a no isn't really a no all the time maybe it's more like hold on I have something better planned for you so these are all ways, some ways, that God may answer prayer. What's your experience been like with these? And now, friends, let us pray. <clears throat> Amazing God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, asking that you draw us into a closer, more personal relationship with the entire Trinity. Cleanse us of our sins and prepare our hearts to pray in a way that pleases you. Help us to know you and love you more this week. Use all of the circumstances of our lives to make us more like Jesus and teach us how to pray always and encourage us as we wait for you to reveal yourself in your answers. Increase our faith in you, Lord, and help us to be in line with your wonderful will and ways so that we may help you in bringing heaven to earth for the good of all, and for your glory and your kingdom. Amen. Now, friends, in 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 5, Paul instructs us to rejoice 
always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So go and do likewise. Amen.